30. I made it by grace. I'm thankful that I did make it by grace. There wasn't another way that I could make it. I was on the phone with Heath the other night, the other day, and I told him, I said, you know, a lot of folks think that salvation is a given, that God has to that God has to come to you uh, multiple times, but He didn't have to come to us but once. But there's a lot of us that He come to us and He pried and pried at us. You know, once and twice and 10 and 11 and 12 times. And so it's really when we say we made it by grace, it was grace from an Almighty God. That's where grace come from. It was nothing that we could do. We made it by Him and I'm thankful for it. Amen. Come on. At all to my name. 
Nothing. Hey, but when I gave my life, Come on. when I gave my heart to Jesus, hey, things turned around right that yeah. second. Amen. He put a spirit in my heart. Yes. He put a spirit, a new spirit, right. and a new clean heart inside of me. Yes. And everything changed. That is the golden ticket. Hey. Listen right. to me now. Yeah. now. Come on. God put this on my heart to tell you. The key is to give your heart everything to Jesus. Amen. Give it to Him. Your desperation, give it to Him. Your desires, give it to Him. Your hurt, give it to Him. Your past, give it to Him and leave it there. When the old devil slew foot comes up and tries to throw it up in your face, bless God, take him back to Calvary. Yes. Jesus, forgive Come on. me for that. Amen. I don't do that stuff. Pastor. That's not me. Come on. Bless God. I'm a new creature. My righteousness is filthy rags. Your righteousness is filthy rags. But bless God, His righteousness is true, tried, pure, and holy. Amen. Come on. His righteousness is what's going to get us through. And His grace. And He don't owe us nothing. Amen. But He gave us everything, didn't He? Yes. Give me everything. Amen. Bless God. I love Him tonight. Amen. I love Him. I love Him. Amen. I don't care. Father, I have wondered why I had to live such a hard life As one of your children, I question Shouldn't things be better for me? So many valleys and too many hills I thought, but I was wrong, Father I'm sorry I didn't see that you do not only want me, Father, of your beloved love and your redeeming one blood was given for the sinners for the debtors and now my debt has fully been paid you sent my savior i owe him my life you settled my forever and i owe you my every day song says he don't owe me one thing but you know what he's going to be good to me tomorrow too That's right. he is Come on. he's going to be good to me tomorrow so how you know you may wake up tomorrow 
get diagnosed with cancer. You may wake up tomorrow and go to work and get killed in a car wreck. I'm telling you, he's still going to be good to me tomorrow. Because no matter what, he's still on the throne. He's still my father. And the worst case scenario is I'm going to heaven. Is that not good news? Amen. My God's going to be good to me tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Hey, I got something to look forward to. Somebody got a song. I thought somebody sang it. Come on, buddy. I know you wore out, but come on. Bless you, Lord. Help you. Come on, Drew. Let's think about this song today. I'm going to sing it. Once again, I face Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. But in my weakness, God sent reinforcement, and that sundown. I sang victory song And the sun's coming up In the morning Every tear will be gone From our eyes And this old clay And I'll hold to an unchanging hand And the sun's coming up in the morning Every tear will be gone from our eyes And this old clay sit down tonight I just want to tell you in here I've seen too much of what God's done in my own life I've seen him change people's life I've seen him heal people in my life and I've come too far to turn back now I've I've been through enough to know that he'll be enough and he is enough and we let let me tell you something you may be facing something in your life but I'm going to tell you this he always wins and we are victors through him I love the Lord tonight good. Anybody else? All right, we've got a special visitor with us tonight. I will butcher his name, so I'm just going to call him Brother Boney. He is from the Philippines. Uh, he went down to Brent Effler's church and, and got to speak down there. Uh, he's going back to the Philippines on February the 16th, brother? Sixth, sir. The 6th. So, uh, Anyway, he's come up here wanting to uh, present the gospel to us. He's going to preach to us a few minutes and then uh, uh, give us a rundown on what he's trying to do in his country for Jesus. I've done sit here and talk to him before I turned him loose in the pulpit, made sure his King James Version man 
You say, that don't matter to you. It matters to me. Uh, making sure he believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the only way to salvation. And it takes the blood uh, for forgiveness of sin. So me and Brother Bonnie's, come on, brother. We on the same boat, believing in the same Jesus, uh, trying to win people uh, to Jesus so they don't have to die and go to hell. So you pray for Brother Boney as he presents the gospel to us tonight and then uh, gives us the what He had some slideshows, but, man, we're technically challenged around here so bad. That, oh, you got it? Thank you got it? Yeah, I just didn't know if they were ready for it. Okay, you want to do the slides first, brother, or preach first? My wife would sing first. Okay, brother. Yes. Uh, good evening, church. My name is Carmela, and I just want to thank Pastor for letting us come here. And I'm grateful to the Lord that uh, he leads us here to this church. Uh, the title of my song is Bury My Heart on the Mission Field. distant land she has no one to show her God's love no mother or father to wipe away the tears she cries out in the night alone bury my heart on the mission filled Lord I'll go to dry the young girl's tears. I'll serve you no matter where the path may lead. Lord, please bury my heart. A mother grieves for a starving child. She has no one to show her God's love. Earthly provisions will ease their suffering, but who will feed their empty souls? Bury my heart on the mission filled Lord. I'll give the gospel to these suffering ones. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Lord, please bury my heart. Will you ignore this lost soul? Another one dies. Bury my heart on the mission filled Lord. These distant voices won't fade away. I'll do your will no matter the cost. Lord, please bury my so much. So, before I give my testimony, I want to show first about four minutes 
our work in the Philippines. Thank you so much. At least uh, you see some uh, of our ministry in the Philippines. By the way, my name is Bonifacio. It's hard to pronounce Filipino names, but don't forget that I'm Skinny Boni. That's my name. <laughs> you know, I noticed that Americans are really faster than Filipinos. Not because you are taller than us, but because in the Philippines, when we call somebody and he's not ready, he will say, just a minute. But here in America, if you call somebody and it's not ready, he will say, just a second. So you're really faster than us. And uh, you are more biblical than Filipinos. You know why? Because in the Philippines, we say, 
man shall not live by rice alone, because we eat rice all the time. But here in America, you're really biblical, man shall not live by bread alone, because you eat bread all the time. We have different stature, we have different colors, we have different languages, but thank God we have only one Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Philippines, they say that Philippines is a Christian country, but it's a lie. Because Philippines is a Catholic country, a religious country. Because if you go to the Philippines, thousands of religions you can find. And I grown up a Catholic, but thank God when I was in my first year in the college, I have a sister here in America who got married to an American uh, Air Force that time, and they got saved in Japan in 1981. And uh, my sister, who, is, uh, supporting, who was supporting me that time in my study, she said that, why don't you try to attend the Baptist Church? So, because she's the one uh, uh, helping me in my study, I need to uh, follow her. So I attended the Baptist Church in the Philippines, and that was the very first time that I hear the gospel. And at the invitation, I found out that I already in front crying and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And uh, when I was in college, I took a Bachelor of Science in Criminology because my ambition is to be a police officer one day, a police officer. But thank God, because God's will is the best. He saved me, and he called me in the full-time ministry. Now, I am teaching the police officers, as you see in the, uh, the presentation. In fact, those police officers, they, are, they were singing the time. They went to the church. They, they are attending the church, but not uh, every Sunday, because, you know, police officers are very... Uh, busy, and they sang in the church every every week. I'm going to their uh, office. There are two offices, so I'm going to their offices and uh, I'm preaching to them the word of God. And also, uh, because the blessing there is, there are police officers uh, in the Philippines that generals that are Christians, not just Christians, but they are Baptist Christians. So, of course, they allowed the pastors to preach to every uh, police offices. And also, we have our ministry, the jail ministry, uh, the male and the female. In the jail ministry, the first time I went there, the people said, we do not want to hear you because most of the people inside the jail are Muslims because uh, their problem is about drugs, drug problems. But the fifth time I went there, they said, we want to hear you. Why? Because I did not uh, preach them about attacking the leaders. I did not preach them about my religion. But I introduced them to the Lord Jesus Christ as the only one Lord and Savior. Amen. And thank God for that. And some of them, not all of them, but some of them profess for salvation. We say in the Philippines, profess for salvation because only God knows if they are saved or not. Because it's easy to say yes to God, but in their heart, no. So we have also the government uh, agencies that uh, uh, in the evangelism, there's an evang uh, government agencies, the Department of Socia Social Welfare and Development. They are the poor people helping by the government but before they receive the help from the government, they need us to give seminars to them every month. And thank God because, because of that uh, kind of uh, ministry, we were able, in 2018, we were able to start a new ministry or new mission work that time. And now they have a pastor. And uh, by the way, uh, I'm pastoring a church since 1994 in our place, in Subic Bay. If, uh, that is the former 
U.S. Naval Base in the Philippines. And uh, we, last, last May, we started another mission work, and that's the fifth mission work that we started since I pastored in that place. And we started in a city, in the city of Polongapo. And, uh, you know, in the Philippines, you cannot uh, be a city if your population is less than 100,000. So that city that we started, the population is 270,000. So a lot of people. So pray for us because, of course, in the cities, uh, expensive to rent. Of course, we cannot uh, start immediately to build the building you know, for the church. But uh, uh, for the meantime, we are praying that we can rent a house for our uh, Sunday school or Sunday ministry. Because in the morning, preacher, I'm, I'm, I'm pastoring my home church, the church that I'm pastoring, and I preach there, and in the afternoon, we rest about two hours, and then uh, me, we, together with the volunteer workers, we go to the field of mission, and we go house to house. And now we have our jail ministry in that place, uh, we have police uh, ministry in that place, we have children ministry, and we have our uh, evangelism ministry, and we are praying that we can uh, have our regular Sunday services, but we need to uh, rent a place. That's the reason why we are here. We are raising for $500 for that uh, ministry so that uh, uh, that $500 can sustain our rental for the place and, of course, the other bills. And we are praying for five, 50 churches or 50 individuals that could support us at least $10 a month. We, we need committed Christians to help us in this matter because this is the ministry of God. If the Lord touched your heart to be a part of the ministry of the Philippines, we really appreciate it. So, secondly, in our church, as you see the attendance, there are only three uh, families you're so blessed here in America because in our church, there are only three families that have cars. And I, we are happy to say I'm one of them because I have an old car, model 2007. The capacity is seven, but we double the capacity because we need to. That's, uh, that's why all the, my assistant pastor always telling me our car is flat again flat tire because of, uh, you know, uh, it's an old car and then uh, you overload it. So pray for us. We need, we are, our goal for that to buy a, a brand new, if God will, uh, God's will, a brand new a van, it's, uh, it can carry, uh, the capacity is 17 Filipino size. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but of course, you know, in the Philippines always, uh, uh, overloading. No, when, uh, they, uh, when you do that during Sunday, the police officers can understand it. One time, I was driving a, a motor, a, a tricycle, we call that a motorcycle with sidecar, and we, we were about seven that time. And there was a checkpoint. The police officer, psst, stop, stop. When he saw me, oh, pastor, go, go, go. <laughs> so, uh, the goal is to $20,000, and right now, we have already $6,500, and we still have four Sundays here in America, and then going back to, to the Philippines. So please pray for us, so that we can pray, uh, buy that uh, van, and we can use that for the ministry in the Philippines. So consider us in your prayers. And now, as the pastor said, I will give a message, and I'm, I'm ready for that, preacher. Uh, in the Philippines, our favorite uh, event or sport here in America, I think, football. In the Philippines, there are two. Number one is basketball. That's why we are always, uh, uh, you know, watching NBA. And, of course, the second is boxing, because Pacquiao is in the Philippines. <laughs> so, and I'm not a basketball player, but I love three points. So I have three points this evening. So please bear with me. And I want to preach about 
three things. Three things God wants us to do after salvation. And I want to share this in uh, Second Peter. Chapter 3, verse 18. In verse 18, it says here, But grow in grace and in the, and, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. O oh God and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this privilege. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for this congregation. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor. Uh, and I pray, Lord, that continue to bless every one of us. We are praying if there is anyone who is sick this uh, evening in this congregation, I pray, Lord, that heal him, heal her, O Lord. Touch her by your hands, Lord. And I pray that this message will be a, a blessing to each, every one of us. For we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, and you may be seated. I'm not a pure English because in the Philippines we have our lang own language. So if ever that I speak in tongues, just ask my wife after this, and she will interpret it. But I will try my very best to preach in English. Three things that God wants us to do after salvation. First of all, God wants us to grow up spiritually. Amen? As the Bible said here, that but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, as Christians, we need to grow up spiritually. A newborn brave Christian must desire to hear God's word according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse uh, 2. It says here, uh, and, uh, as a newborn babe desiring, you know, the milk, you know, the, the, this is the, the sincere milk. That's what the Bible says. This is the word of God. And secondly, not only that, as a growing Christian, we, we must study the Word of God. In order to grow more, we need to study the Word of God because the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself, a proof unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Even pastors always studying the Word of God. Pastors do not study, do not stop studying the Word of God. Because even we, uh, Christian workers, Sunday school teachers, we want to grow and grow and grow spiritually for the glory of God. That's why we study the Word of God. So every day, in the book of uh, uh, in the book of Acts, they study, uh, they always study the Word of God. They get together, they share together, no. That what that's what the Bible said to to uh, Joshua in the book of Joshua. The Bible says in one eight, this book of the law shall not depart up out, depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate it during day and night. And it says in the last that thou shalt have good success. Many people today they are successful, but not good success. Amen. But Christians. When we study the Word of God, we meditate the Word of God, then we have good success in life. Thirdly, and a glowing Christian must show his bright light to others. What does it mean? A glowing. Glowing means producing light. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works. Yeah. Remember, Christians, we are in the Philippines. The Catholics said, work, do good work so that you can go to heaven. But we are now Christians because we have accepted already the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So as Christians, we need to show our bright light to others. Yeah. Why? So that they will glorify. They see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Others say, in the word others here is to other believers. We need to influence the other believers. Maybe the young believers. If we have a bright light, we can inspire them 
to continue serving the Lord. Amen? And of course, the unbelievers. There's a saying in metaphor, to say something is one thing, but to prove it is another thing. Right. It means to say, it's very easy to say that you are Christian, but to prove is hard. Christians, we need to make our light to shine. We, because the Bible says, we are the light of this world. You know? So we need to show our bright light to others so that believers will be, uh, will be encouraged to serve the Lord, will, be, will continue to serve the Lord, and unbelievers will be saved because they see the good testimony in us. Testimony is very important. That is, that is our light. So God wants us to grow up spiritually. Secondly, God wants us to serve Him faithfully. No? We are to serve God reverently. According to 1 Corinthians 10.31, it says here, in 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. You see, you know, I'm so happy in this church because we've been visited many churches, not to compare you to other churches, but I have seen here that all, that, that, that this is a, it's not Sunday today, it's Wednesday. Mostly, when you go to churches, when Wednesday, only few people you can see there. You know that. But here, it's just Sunday. Amen? It's just like Sunday. Many people here. Many people in the choir. Why? Because there are Christians that really serving the Lord. And I believe that this church is growing Christian, or growing church. Why? Because I have seen the children. I have seen the young people. I have seen the, even the adult with their children singing for the Lord. And that is what the Lord wants us to do. To serve Him faithfully. You know, in the Philippines, our, because it's a Catholic country, we have young people who want to serve the Lord, but being hindered by their parents, unbelieving parents. So if you are Christian, if you are young people, and your parents are also Christians, praise the Lord for that. You are so blessed. Because it's really hard if you are a Christian and as, uh, other, other members in the family are not Christian, they will be the one to persecute you. We need to serve God reverent, reverently. Anything we do, do it for the glory of God. We are to serve God steadfastly. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, I like the word beloved brethren. Apostle Paul called them beloved brethren. Why? Because these brethren are faithful to the Lord. If you are faithful to the Lord, you must always be at the church on time. Amen? Amen? Yeah, that's a faithful Christian. You know? Because you are on time. If you are a faithful Christian, you are, you are always participating in the activities of the church. You know, in some churches, they love go outing. If they say, the pastor will say, oh, members, we have an outing. Everybody say, can I come, pastor? Can I go with you, pastor? But when the pastor say, we need choir, pastor, let them sing. <laughs> so, but I praise God because in this church, I have seen a lot of uh, people or members of the choir singing for the Lord. So, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? For your labor. I stop there. I want the word labor. The word labor is always experienced by the mothers when they deliver their child normally. Not cesarean. Because... What's the, 
they say in the Philippines we have a job. What's the difference between cesarean? You, you understand cesarean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And normal uh, uh, delivery of baby. If uh, we deliver the, the the mother will deliver the baby normally, mostly the hurt is here because he forced, you know. But in the but if you are cesarean, it's the 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 hurt is not here. It's here. It's on the pocket because you paid a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true, right? Yeah. So, labor. You see the mother laboring while uh, delivering the child. But after that, she can no longer remember the pain when, you see, when she see the baby that she delivered. So that's labor. The Bible says, your labor or our labor is not in vain in the Lord. So continue serving the Lord. And we are to serve God fervently. Fervent means burning or hot. In other words, we must always be on fire in serving the Lord. You know? So, last in the Philippines, if we say last, everybody say, Amen! <laughs> but uh, we heard that here in America, they say, Hallelujah! Because we're going home. <laughs> Thirdly, God wants us to finish our course. Acts 20:24 in the book uh, of Acts, Apostle Paul said in verse 24, 2024, 20, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life there unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. In the first place, he said, but none of these things move me. You see, in the ministry, uh, in this course, uh, the course that uh, uh, Paul is uh, telling here or mentioning here is not our course in college. You know, when you are in college, what is your course? Yeah. It's Bachelor of Science in Criminology or in Nursing or whatever. But Apostle Paul is speaking about our ministry here on earth. If your ministry is singing, that is your course. Finish it with joy. If uh, your ministry is Sunday school teacher, finish it with joy. If you are a preacher, finish it with joy. If you are an encourager, Finish it with joy. You know, all of us, every Christian, have his own ministry in the church. God did not save us for nothing. God did not save us just to, we, we say in the Philippines, God did not save us just to make whole on the chairs that you are, on the benches that you are uh, sitting down. God saved us for a specific purpose or ministry on earth, and that is our course. So we need to finish our course no? excellently. It says in Philippians 1 to 21, it said, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, it says here, verse 6, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. See, this is what Apostle Paul said. In Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, it says here, let, And let us not be weary in what? In well-doing. Why? For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen? I like verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, 
Let us do good unto all men. We are here in America from the Philippines. Temporarily, we are away from our family and, it, and it's hard to do that. Just imagine for more than four months, we are not with our children. No? Because uh, we have three children. The, the first one is uh, Wayne John. Second is Lee Matthew. The third is uh, Leland Mark. So we have the three gospel. We need to, uh, we are supposed to complete that, but my wife is cesarean. But uh, because we have a dog, we, we named it Luke so that we can complete the full gospel. And uh, they are in the church. They are helping uh, the work there. So thank God for that because we have uh, children that are supporting the work of the Lord. So as we have there for opportunity, I like the word opportunity. There's a, there is a saying that opportunity comes once. You know, we are here not as just a visitor. We are here as your brethren in Christ. We are here because we need your help. And we are here because we believe that God can use us to be our partners in the ministry in the Philippines. And we are here to Ask your prayers for us because we are brethren in the Lord. And this is your opportunity. I heard about somebody that uh, carrying his brother. And somebody sir, said, put it down. He is a burden. And he said, he is no burden. He is my brother. We are your brother in the Lord. And do not consider us as your burden because we are partners in the ministry. So consider us in your prayer. Who knows our, the time that we are here and you help us, you supported us. Maybe one time in, in heaven, you will be wondering, brown-skinned Filipinos, shaking your hands and saying, thank you because you supported the Filipino missionary and now I'm here. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Brethren, continue to serve the Lord. We need to finish our course for the glory of God. Thank you, and may I ask the pastor, please. Appreciate that message, didn't you? Amen. That's what it's going to take, continuing in the faith, keeping the faith, being that light, being excited about doing a work for God. If you go around doing something for the Lord and you go around begrudging it, if it, if it kills you to come to church and you ain't going to get no blessing. If it, if it begrudges you to help somebody and give them something to support the gospel, then it ain't going to further the gospel. But I tell you what, we are beyond blessed. This brother right here said three families in his church have cars. And he said, I'm blessed to have an old one. And they pack it out every Sunday trying to get people to church. I guarantee you everybody sitting in this church has got at least two vehicles in their, par in their, at their house. Some of us, three, four, five, six, don't even need them. Just want them. We're blessed. We're blessed. This brother right here, he did not tell me this. Brent told me this. And it's kind of a shame. I mean, it ain't like they come up here asking for $20,000, $10 a month. $10 a month. Beg churches to let them come in. Brent said out of like 100 churches they contacted, four of them let them come speak and talk. That blows my mind. God has called us to spread the gospel. I can't physically, I mean, I guess I could, but we can't physically go down there and spread the gospel. But if we can help this brother, and I'll tell you what, my spirit 
bore witness with his spirit. I have no doubt, no, no reservations at all. And if we can help them spread the gospel down there, we're doing just as good as going out here in the street and preaching and getting folks saved. That being said, brother, I promise you we'll pray about this. Is this how we can reach out to you about full-time support? Okay. But right now we're going to get our, uh, our ushers up here. We're going to take up an offering to help them spread the gospel. I got to talk to them a little bit more. They're trying their best to build a church. They're trying to get a van so they can go out and recruit people to the church because he said even if you go out and they get folks saved, it's hard to get them to church because very few people have a vehicle to get there. We've got a van over here that will hold. It won't hold 17 because most of our folks is fat. But uh, it'll hold about 12. And it sits here. And the biggest thing we've got to worry about is the tires dry rotting on it because it don't get used. If we use it somewhere, we hauling kids to go snow tubing, going here or there. I wish we was packing it out, bringing people into the church. That being said, let's stand, take up a love offering for these folks that they can spread the gospel greater down there where they're living. I know it will be appreciated. Brother Mark, would you bless the offering, brother?